microphone wasn't on. Sorry, sorry, hi. <laughs> Welcome back to English and Chill. Um, I'm Ali, I'm your teacher. It's another sunny Sunday here at English and Chill in this lovely cafe. Um, feel free, if this is your first time, to just relax, grab a pen, piece of paper, make notes where you need. Um, we're going to do some vocabulary about rules and options today. So, first we're going to learn that, then I want to talk to some of you during Let's Get Political. That is the piece that I do every week where we talk about something political happening in the world, but learning English with it. That's the important thing. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment. We've got some people, some special people that we're going to talk to. Um, but let me say hello to some of you first. Hello, Manuel. How you doing? William, Natasha, how you doing? Natasha, it's always good to see you. Ala, Lala from Poland. How are you doing, buddy? Arthur, good to see you. Oksana, good to see you. No sound. I know. I always forget to turn the microphone on. And I apologize. And I am learning. But I'm rubbish. So bear with me. Bear with me. Sophia, how you doing, buddy? Naina, love from India. Love back to you from London. I hope you're doing well in India. Um, Laura, hello from Vietnam. How you doing in Vietnam? Um, funny story. I, I bought some Vietnamese sauce from Tesco, which is our supermarket here, and it sucked. We do not do good food from other countries in England. Just, we're, we're rubbish. We're rubbish at food. We're, we're British. We know we're rubbish. Greetings from Colombia. Hola, parcero. Como estas? Como estas? Parcerito. I hope you're doing well. I really hope you're doing well. Um, hello from Sri Lanka. Hello in Sri Lanka. Brazil. There we go. People are coming in now. So let's get started. First, rules. How do we talk about rules in English? So let's make an example situation. Um, s tell me in the comments, what is your job? What do you do? Um... Do you study? Do you work? If you work, what do you do? If you study, what do you study? Let me know in the comments. So let me get... Whoops, not that. Let's get our characters up while we're waiting for some comments. Burn is a student... Where are you watching from, Bern? 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 Am I pronouncing that right? I, I don't know. Vassal's an editor. Ooh, I feel your pain, Mr. Editor. Um, For the other people who work in um, editing or images or video, how do you feel about Adobe taking Figma? Is that a... The news makes it sound like a huge thing, but... I, I've never used Figma. Lots of my friends have, though. And they they love it. But I notice people don't love, don't love Adobe. So, I don't know. But as a YouTuber, I rely. I depend on Adobe. So, you know. I don't like that face. Let's change it. Different layer for this guy. Let's put him over here. Whoops. Oops. Can you him down a bit? There we go. Now we can see his face. He's got a very long face. All right. So we've got a student. Arthur is a warehouse operator. Andrea is a psychologist. Damn, you're smart, Andrea. Um, who is a high school student. I really want to be a pilot. Wow. Okay, you must be smart. Definitely. Um... Natasha is an... Oh, you're an author? You're an author, Natasha? What have you written? Like, what type of books do you write? Oksana is between jobs. I used to work at a travel agency. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of difficult at the moment, no? Um, Laura has a shop 
in Venezia, Italy. Whoa. What kind of shop? What do you sell in your shop? Um, Sophia studies theology and also a painter. Now, when you say painter, do you mean like art painting or do you mean decorating, like in a house? Adam is a TV reporter. Awesome. 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 Okay. Woody is a technological student. I'm willing to be a writer. You're willing to be a writer? I think you're not using that right. When you say I'm willing, it means, eh, it's okay for me to do this. It's like if I don't know. You say to me, Ali, can you look after my child? It's a baby and it cries and it poos everywhere. Um, can you look after my child for like an hour? If, for me, if that's okay, uh, fine, I'm, I'm willing to do it. It's okay. I don't want to do it, but I, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I'm willing to do it. But if I want to say, you know what, no, I, I'm not willing to do that. I don't want to do it. I'm not okay with it. Yeah. Hakan says that they say bald people are better at learning foreign languages. Is it true? Who's they? Who says that? I don't believe anyone says that. All right. Regina studied economics but had a rubbish laptop, so it became an IT engineer later. You know what? I'm going to put these chats up in the thing. Uh... It's gonna work. It's gonna work. Is it going? Is it going? There we go. Okay. Doesn't show the whole message there. That's annoying. Um, I'm, I'm gonna put it right there in the corner. It doesn't show the bottom. I don't know why. So I'm sorry. But you know, we we live. We live and we learn. Alrighty. So let's say that. Let's take one of these. One of these examples, a flight attendant. Okay, Oksana is a flight attendant. Oksana, what do you look like? Let me see your little picture. Um, I cannot see your picture in your profile, so I will guess what you look like. You probably look like this, no? It looks exactly like you, right? So, you're a flight attendant. Flight attendant. Now, you're attend is that how the spelling is? I think so. It looks wrong, but I'm sure it... Attendant. Attendant. Yeah, that's the right spelling. Yeah. Okay, tell me some rules for a flight attendant. Okay, so this is then going to be the bus. And he's going to tell her the rules. The rules. For being. A flight attendant. Tell me what the rules are, Oksana. Um, and everyone else. Tell me what some rules that she has to follow are. So first of all, you... Um, when we talk about rules, you can follow rules. That means you there is a rule and you do it. You don't do the opposite. And there is like disobey, which means you do not follow the rules. You don't do what the rules tell you. So you can disobey the rules, um, or we could say go against. Go against the rules. That means the same thing as disobey. And of course, yes, in the positive, we could say obey the rules. Okie dokie. Um, Oksana, short white hair. Oh, that's what you look like. Okay, I thought that was a rule. Okie dokie. Flora has said they need to wear a uniform. Vassal also says, wearing a uniform. 
Oh, Hakantis has to be beautiful? Really? Is that true? I don't think so. Can't be. That can't be true. I think. Need to rearrange myself here. Oksana, is that true? Like, do they have... have kind of rules about your image, though? I feel like I wouldn't be able to be a flight attendant because, you know, if I don't shave for a few days, they won't let me on a on a flight. To present safety directions before the airplane takes off. Yes, true. Um, okay, perfect grooming. Okay, that's the one we're going to use. Okay, so um, how can we talk about rules? We want to say that... Um, Okay, everyone knows you must, right? When we say you must, that's giving a rule. But this is very formal, very official. I hear this a lot in classes and from students that use you must or I must too much in casual conversations or casual situations. We don't want that. When we say you must, it's official. Maybe you'll see it on a sign. Maybe you'll hear it from a boss. But in casual conversation, you don't really use this one. So let's change this. Um, I think Hakan had a good one. Has to. Okay. So, you know what? I'm going to... Get rid of this. Yeah. There we go. No, not yet. There we go. You have to. Right, so when we say you have to, that is way better to use. It's way more common, way more casual um, to talk about rules. You have to. So who said that? Um, wear a uniform, right? Wear a uniform. Notice also, we do say a uniform, not an. Yes, that is a ver uh, verb, a vowel. You, that's a vowel, but it's not a vowel sound. When you write a or an, it's about the vowel sound. And in uniform, it sounds like a U. Why? It's not a vowel. For that reason, ah, wear a uniform. You have to wear a uniform. Okay. Um... have to be someone who doesn't panic that's good they mustn't have tattoos on the tip of the body i think you mean um revealing no revealing tattoos no visible is the word i'm looking for okay um so what this is a negative right you mustn't have visible Tattoos. Shit, is it one T or two? Yeah, I've been teaching English for like more than 10 years. And sometimes I forget basic spelling. So don't worry if you make mistakes with spelling. Okay, you mustn't have tattoos visible. Um, oh, okay. So Hui says... Flight attendants don't have to have a tattoo. If you have, you should cover it up. Okay, some interesting vocabulary there. Can I... Can I show this one? I want to show this message, but it's not letting me. Oh, there we go. There we go. Flight attendants don't have to have a tattoo. Now, is this correct? Not exactly. 
it's a very good <laughs> very good guess what color do we use here okie dokie yeah so when we say you have to that is a rule but in the negative you don't have to That's not a negative rule. It's not the same as you mustn't. You don't have to. That is an option. We're saying, mm, it's an option. You can, but it's not necessary. So you don't have to. That's not a rule. That's an option. Be careful with that. So if I say to you, um, I don't know. Ah, okay, there we go. You can support these classes by buying me a coffee or a plate of donuts and you'll make something fun happen on the screen. You don't have to, but it's appreciated. You don't have to, it's not a rule. Yeah, oh, by the way, the tea or the coffee for today, today is a chai. I've been taught not to say chai tea because apparently chai T just means T. T. Mm. Chai is very, very good. Mm. They visit many countries. I envy them. Oh, me too. Me too. I wanted to be a flight attendant when I was growing up to to travel. Yeah. Um, okay, mustn't wear heavy makeup. Oh, is that true? You mustn't wear... Heavy makeup. I didn't know that. Is that true? Um, don't have to. It's not mandatory. There we go. We've got some vocabulary there. Very interesting vocabulary. Okay. When we say... Um, what's that? Blue? We can say it's mandatory. And then the next verb will be to with infinitive. It's mandatory to, it's necessary to, it's the law, it's the rules. Um, let's say, yeah, it's the rules, basically. It's the rules, it's mandatory. So in some countries, you might have mandatory pronunciation. Man, da, tree, like tree with leaves, green tree. It's mandatory, mandatory. It's the rules, it's the law. Uh, in some countries, it's mandatory to join the military. Um, ah, okay, so good question. Gennaro Coppola, any relation of Sophia? What's the difference between mandatory and compulsory? Ooh, great question. Great question. Okay, um, so mandatory... and compulsory basically mean the same thing you are never gonna use one more than the other basically that's the basic answer for that so you could use them synonymously it's mandatory to blah 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 it's compulsory to blah 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 what about the negative of this how can we say oh this mm -mm -mm. In an official, remember, these are very, very official terms. It's mandatory. It's compulsory. You'll get this in a contract, for example. We could say it's what? What's that missing word? Sophia, what kind of drink do you have with you today? I just told people it's a chai. Um, there's a bit of cinnamon on the top, just because cinnamon is delicious. Yeah. Being a people person is mandatory. Edson, great example there. Well done. Really good. Is there any difference between you don't have to and you don't need to? Nope. Exactly the same thing. Both are choices. Mm. Natasha says, cannot. Yes, uh, let's put this over here then. You can't. 
But again, that's more casual. So in a contract, they won't say you can't uh, have visible tattoos. No, they'll use the official vocabulary. Not the casual vocabulary. Yeah, official, you mustn't. It's, what is that negative version of mandatory or compul compulsory? There we go, Camille, well done, yes. It's prohibited, and we're gonna do pronunciation, don't worry. It's prohibited or forbidden. Well done, really good. These mean absolutely not. This is not allowed. And then all of them. The verb was to with infinitive. So let's have a look at some examples of that. Um, be rude. Very good. Really, really good. Yeah. It's prohibited to be rude. I mean, in a contract, I don't think they would write that. But in a more casual conversation, yeah. Oh, it's not allowed to be rude. That's fine. That's good. Uh, where is my tea from? Um, I got it in Soho. There's a great place called Algerian Coffee Stores? Algerian Coffee Stores in Soho. Best place for coffee in London. Best place. It's been there forever and you get a bag of coffee or tea. You can go and smell all the teas and the coffees. Ah, it's so good there. Yeah, so I got my chai from there. Not just a tea bag. Yeah, okie dokie. So someone said, oh, Natasha. Natasha said, should not. Okay, this, this is not a rule. This is, again, this is a common mistake. Let's um, hide this. Should and should not. Whoops. Or the contraction. Remember, it's always better to use the contraction. Should not, shouldn't. This is not a rule. This is more for advice. So you don't give rules with should or shouldn't. You should, it's like saying eh, it's better to blah blah blah. You shouldn't, uh, you're saying it's not a good idea to blah blah blah. So um as a flight attendant, what could be some advice for you? I guess, what, being a people person? Yeah, that's good. Let's say it's better to be a people person. If you don't know, a people person means you're social, you're sociable, you're very good with dealing with people. You can talk to people and it's cool. You don't have any problems. You shouldn't. It's uh, not a good idea to be rude. And the structure is the same. You should be a people person. You shouldn't be rude. Yeah. Um, Algerian? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if the owners are Algerian, but... That's the name of the shop. If you're in Soho, if you're in London, look it up. I think it's on Old Compton Street. Very, very good. Um, amazing coffee. It's the best you'll find in London. They don't sponsor me. I don't have to say that. But I'm a fan of that shop, so I should. I should say nice things because I'm a fan. It's not mandatory. It's not compulsory. It's just my choice. Yeah. Uh, we love chai in Iran. So that brings us to our next topic. Um, let's move straight on. Let's move on to... Let's get political. 
in Let's Get Political. Every week we have a new topic to talk about. This week we're talking about Iran, where there are protests in the streets. Um, this is a very serious topic and it's really heartbreaking to see. Um, so I have some people to chat to us today to tell us exactly what's happening there. Um, first, I want to hear from you. If you're there, tell me exactly what's happening. What do you see? Um, if you don't live there, maybe you have family there. Tell me your stories. Uh, I had so many messages this week on Instagram um, asking people asking me to tell their stories, but I asked a few people if they would um, join this live class so we could hear it directly from the people. Um, I know in Iran that the internet is shut down in most cases. Right? I think it's, um... I know, like, WhatsApp and Instagram is down. People can't use it. So, yeah, if, if you have any stories about this, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Um, so, first, this is... The, the first thing we're going to look at is, uh... One story that was sent to me, she doesn't want her name or face revealed. Obviously, it's it might be dangerous and I don't want to be responsible for anyone to be in danger. So I told her I would read her story with her permission. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so let's have a look. Um, I'm Iranian. We'll call her Jane. I'm Iranian and living in Milan, Italy. I was arrested by the morality police, police, sorry, about 10 years ago. Now, first we need to just look at that for a second, the morality police. What are they? Now, I, I've spoken to a few viewers before, some people who follow me, um, that in Iran, wearing the hijab is mandatory. That's that word again, mandatory. So it's the rules, it's the law. Um, why? Because they just love controlling women's bodies. That's the only reason. The only reason anyone would do that. Um, yeah. Um, Oksana says, Iranian people were shocked by the death of a young woman. That's where we're going with this. So the morality police say... It's mandatory. Well, you know what? Let's put that word in blue. Mandatory. Remember that mandatory means it's the rules, it's the law, and the pronunciation. Mandatory. Compulsory. You must. You have to. It's not your choice. That's the law. So that's what the morality police um, enforce. That's what they make sure people obey. So um, Jane, our friend Jane, was arrested. They can arrest you if you don't wear the hijab. Um, it was such a scary experience, I bet. The policeman yelled at me. So to yell means to ah, not, not sing. But no, to yell means to shout. It's a synonym. It's it's a synonym of shout. They yelled at me to get in the va in the van. They opened up a case and treated me like a criminal, and take photos like criminals with those boards. Oh, okay, I know what you mean. Um, I don't know their name. I don't know either. Yeah, you know when criminals have a photo. And they hold up a sign with a number on it and your name. That, basically. Um, my sister and family are in Tehran. Tehran is the capital city of Iran. Now, and I'm worried about them. I imagine I'm worried for you. The government has shut down the internet and is killing people. Yeah, we're... S By the way, we do get this on our news. 
today, lately. Um, they are talking about it. Um, that they are killing people. They're killing protesters. We talked about this last week. You know, should what things should you be allowed to protest? Should you be allowed to protest everything? Um, I think yes. If you don't agree with something, absolutely. You should be allowed to protest and not be in danger of your life. Um, and this trying to control women is a huge one. You never, never try and control women in any sense. In America right now, it's abortion. People want to try and ban abortion. They want to prohibit, to forbid abortion. That is just a way of controlling women. Um, in France, a few years ago, maybe now still, I'm not sure, um, they tried to make it mandatory. Well, they made it, they wanted to prohibit wearing hijabs. It said you cannot wear hijabs. Um, and now in Iran, it's compulsory to wear the hijab. So you can see a pattern here. It's not about religion. It's not about um, murdering a baby. It's about controlling women. That's the only thing this is about. And to argue otherwise is ridiculous. Um, so yeah, it's not about religion. This is about control. That's it. Uh, plenty of countries where it's not mandatory. Iran, it didn't used to be mandatory. So it's not about religion. It's about idiots. Yeah, um, I can hardly reach my friends in Tehran due to the shutdown of the net. But in those short messages, they're describing the streets as hell. The police shooting people directly by their firearms. A firearm is a gun. Um, like doing something normal. Okay. Sharing what's happening in Iran is so important to us. We always stood by other countries. Thank you for being a voice. Well, that's what we're here to do today. Um, yeah, in the comments, let's have a look at what you're saying in the comments. If we force women to wear hijab that way, they'll really hate it. I mean, obviously, yeah, if you make something a rule, it's not your choice. Um, and as a friend told me recently, you, you wear... I'm not Muslim. I'm not Christian. I'm atheist. I don't like any religion. But to wear the hijab is out of love, as I understand it, right? So it should be your choice. The same way Christians wear that cross or um, Jewish people have the hat thing. It's a choice. It should never be a rule, one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Mr. S is in the USA, a girl victim of the R word sexual assault. Let's just say, I don't know if YouTube allows these words, um, who's 10 years old and was expected to give birth in her state. Yeah, exactly. The US is crazy. The US is crazy with this. Um... Alex Frame says, what does society think? Is hijab better or, f or freedom? Well, your question is a non-starter. You're asking what's better, the hijab or freedom? The, the question itself is flawed because if you have freedom, you can wear it or you don't have to. If I go out and I want to wear a hat... Because I want to wear a hat. That's it. You don't need other... You don't need any um, reason for that. Why do you talk about politics today, says Mela? What do you mean today? Are you new? Yeah, we do this every Sunday. Um, last week it was about protests in England. This week it's about much more serious protests in Iran. Um... Okay. Okay, so Muaz says the military service is mandatory. Good use of the word for guys here in Syria. Really. Um, 
Yeah, New Logos Chala says it doesn't have a place in today's world. I'm deeply sorry for those who suffer under the ignorant and tyrant regime. No, you want to say tyrannical. The adjective is tyrannical. Yeah. Um, so obviously I want to hear your stories as well. If you're in Iran or have family there and you're worried, you want to tell your story, I'm here for you. Um, I'll read it for you. I'll keep your name anonymous. I'm not looking to get anyone in trouble here. So yeah, feel free to send me a message on Instagram. That's fine. Um, so we have one person right now that we're going to talk to to get the real story. Yeah, okay. Let's see if you're around. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, Ali. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking to me today. Thanks for having me there. Um, no, no, no. My pleasure is all mine. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't want to use your real name or show your face, obviously, for safety. Um, so can we make a, a fake name for you? Which name would you like? Uh, let's think what is the best. Uh... Ali? <laughs> <laughs> Your name is Ali too. I love it. I love it. Okay, cool. Um, Ali. Name too. Yeah, love that. The best choice. So can you can, can you tell us a, a brief introduction to your experience with this? Where are you? Uh, are you in Iran now? Uh, no, at the moment I'm not. I'm abroad. I'm studying outside of Iran. Okay, right. Um, so when were you in Iran last? Uh, it was three months ago. I just visited and I went to visit my family over there. Then I got back and I yeah, continued my studies here. Right, right. Um, what are you hearing from people back home about what's happening now? Well, to be honest, it's really scary over there because people are threatened to talk about it on social media and at the same time i see two groups of people one group who are seeking who are pouring outside and looking for justice and talk about the gunfire talk about um, the demonstrations and the other side people who pretend there is nothing out there because they are scared of the situation and you know i know many people uh, who are uh, called for their uh, stories on social media and, and they have been asked to remove their their stories about massa and mini so uh, it's it's really hard because i know many people would like to talk about it would like to come and join but they are scared already wow so who contacts them to remove these social media posts? Sorry, could you please repeat again? Yeah, um, who contacts them to remove their social media posts? So we have a kind of, um, uh, kind of, uh, I don't know what is the name, in um, kind of enforcement uh, command. There uh, is a kind of state um, group who call people on behalf of the government and uh, kind of police. It's not, they're not police, actually, Iranian police. It's another guard. It's called Sepah. And um, they, uh, an information guard. So they gather the information and ask people that uh, what are you doing on social media is not allowed and you should uh, be shot. You shouldn't mention, you shouldn't talk about it. And even my family are worried that I'm, sharing the stories on social media but i'm happy because they don't have access so they don't can tell me to remove my uh, status my um hashtags over there oh my god um what can we the people outside around what what can we do to to help well i think the best things at the moment because the internet is shut is shut down so it's the best thing is 
to spread the story, to be Iranian people voices, and to just not let them uh, kill people, you know, because they think they, because they shut down, they can do whatever they want and no one will understand because they had the same, they did the same thing three years ago. And during three days, they shut the internet and they killed uh, 1,500 people in the streets and they didn't, they denied it, you know. Mm. So there is not official statistics about it, but we know because we have lost many friends and families over there. Fucking terrifying. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the problem is people are scared. People are threatened to talk about it. But I'm sure if they allow people a kind of peaceful protest, more yeah. people would join and talk about the freedom of uh, expression, freedom of speech, and women rights. Like I look at uh, Massa's photos, and to me, um, her dress code was okay. But I don't get it why they arrested her and then beaten her for I don't know. I don't get it. And the other thing is, I, w I would like to mention that the government and the police are using really dirty tricks over there. Mm. Like, they use ambulances to infiltrate uh, their forces into protesters, and like why people don't know to, to arrest uh, protesters. They uh, have some agents and officers in uh, civilian dress, so people don't know there are police outside. And they trust people and at the same time they attack people and arrest them so these are not fair this is not what people ask for out there and this is not the response we were out there for justice and now uh, they, they ignore us they deny it that they killed massa and they don't allow us to talk about it wow well we can talk about it here at least Thank you very much mm -hmm. for giving me the opportunity. I was thinking to do something, so I'm really happy that there is an opportunity to do, talk, about, at least to someone. Even one person can hear the story from people's mouths. I think it's much better than the uh, news, the state news, because they censor, they don't tell the truth to people. So they state there is no free media in my country. So whatever they say in the state media and the national TV, is not right is exactly in support of the regime so definitely they deny and they they call this protest as a revolution if i'm not <laughs> pronouncing it wrongly you know revolution Re Re rebellion rebellions or kind of uh, riots it's not protest they they don't call it as a protest yeah. like someone is uh, you know uh, disturbing the society. Right. Um, it, it seems like it's... What do you think it's going to look like in the future? Do you think it's going to gain more support for the protests? Do you, what, what do you think is going to happen over the next few days? Well, I hope that people... Uh, I mean, around the world, not just my country, they get united and they help us to uh, get back to 40 years ago. Then when we have this freedom, we have the freedom of speaking, freedom of religion. Mm. And I hope that happened because at the moment we are not allow, alone. It's not like the previous time. Um, so we have uh, international support. We have this uh, anonymous hacker group who is... Uh, hacking the government website, which is a kind of helpful because they don't allow us to be on the internet, but they are using the internet to distort the truth, you know. Mm. So I think as long as people can hear these stories and share their stories, so they can't um, they can't continue like this. They should uh, admit it at some point. Yeah. Um, so I think we need to make it um, clear. Some people are asking in the comments, why did these protests only start now? Um, because like you said, this is a 40 year old tradition. Um, can you explain to the people who don't know what right. started these protests? What what exactly happened? So it started almost two weeks ago when Massa Amini and her family traveled to Tehran to just visit the capital. 
and uh, she was uh, beaten and arrested by morality police for not wearing a proper hijab, you know, based on their standards. So she was in their custody while she was um, killed and uh, she was in the brain the state at that time. And within two days, um, she died of the injuries. And now after that, people um, poured out into the street to protest for justice for Massa. But in response, government uh, uh, suppressed the protesters and at the same time opened fire on the civilians. So uh, that's why it continues so far for two weeks and it's getting worse and worse uh, because they are uh, using the, these ambulances that they mentioned. They are using, like they um, hide in the schools. Hmm. They hide in uh, public places. So people don't know where are they and they can't trust each other to be united. And we had other uh, protests uh, before because of the inflation in my country because of the uh, unemployment rent and other economic crisis but this is different this is about freedom this is about women rights that are, have been oppressed for 40 years after 1979 revolution in iran yeah i mean that's that's always we had is it maybe maybe 10 years ago in london um the police unlawfully killed um someone in london and because they denied it because they lied about it it caused riots in london so that's for for the police to lie about someone they killed or in this case murdered um of what do they expect what do they expect? You know, of course people are going to, they're not going to stand for this. And they shouldn't. Exactly. It's just, it could have been any of us. Yeah. Could, like any other women in that situation. If I was in Iran, I think I was wearing the same dress as Masa and it will happen to me. So mm. I can't imagine that my friends, myself, my relatives uh, being arrested and killed for the same reason because we didn't choose to think and have the same religion, so now they are forcing mm. for this type of, uh, you know, rules. And hijab, it wasn't uh, even part of our ru rules. And then made they made a law about hijab, wearing hijab, and now we have to, and they use the law name, you mm. know, saying this is law, you should obey it. No, this is not what we chose. Yeah. Yeah, a few people are saying in, um, where is it? In Malaysia and Indonesia, it's optional to wear the hijab. Um, and someone else has pointed out in, in Islam. So you're going to have to correct me or put the record straight. In Islam, hijab is not forced on women. They can wear it or they may decline it. Um, to people thinking it's Islam that oppresses women, it's actually the people. What do you think about that? be honest in our country it says is in islam so uh, i don't have other uh, countries uh, information but mm. in our country they said this is in islam and you should you have to accept it and the thing is people say this is islamophobia this is not islamophobia this is our experiences and no one would like to hear it because they think we we scare people about islam no this is our uh, 30 years 40 years experience of being oppressed by wearing something that we don't want and they say there is no force in islam how come if it's not force how come we should we have to accept it mm. it's heartbreaking it's, yeah it's heartbreaking Seriously. yeah it, it is. It's all about controlling women. Nothing really to do with religion. People will use religion as the excuse. Like we talked about um, in the US, they're using Christianity to um, make abortion the same as murder. Which, uh, nothing. Yeah. They use religion as the excuse, but let's not, let's not, let's just call it what it is. It's just to control women, which is, is gross. Exactly. 
people like that because yeah. they they are manipulating people by using their beliefs you know mm. so in that is islamic so they get the authorization based on the islam they say okay if you are muslim you should obey us because we are um the substitution of god in uh, on earth mm. so you if you say it's opposite of what we say so it means you are opposite of god you don't you are a uh, atheist right, something right. like that and then they get the permission to attack people for that and then torture people yeah it's it's insane i don't know if you remember in um the beginning of covid in, in france there was uh they were talking about making the hijab pr uh, they wanted to outlaw it so they wanted to say you you can't wear it it's illegal to wear the yeah. hijab but at the same time they wanted to make face masks mandatory so at the very same time face masks face coverings were both illegal and mandatory <laughs> the most illogical thing ever yeah, yeah. it's just that's crazy that's crazy that, that all these rules are sometimes contradictive and they can't see mm. you know, everyone can understand like you no know, this is our body you shouldn't force us you you can't force us based on the yeah. if this is a law like we should change it this is not correct totally agree totally agree and um, what we're seeing on the news at least in england is um whew, it, we're seeing a show of strength from particularly iranian women um and it's it's incredible to see just the, the strength that you guys are showing um in the streets against like a very heavy-handed force that are ready to just kill you if you disagree but the, the strength that you're seeing from iranian women in these protests is amazing just love to see it and I think it's because of the 40 years uh, suppression, you know, after 40 years, you're fed up with this, like, th death is better than this type of life to me. Wow. That's why I don't, I'm not afraid of them anymore. And I would like to talk and I hope that this movement, this uh, revolution get to somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it leads somewhere. It sounds like a big change is needed and a big change for the positive and i hope you get it thank you very much ali thank you <laughs> yeah no thank you so much for telling everyone your story and thank you so much for being here and um you're awesome um thank you very much ali for having me i really enjoyed this session yeah no uh, my, my pleasure having you um i hope the rest of your day is really good do you have plans for the rest of today yeah i need to work a little bit <laughs> i'm starting to yeah. Because I, have a, I keep my eyes on the news. I'm not very efficient at this day, so I need to work when I can. Lots I going on. The PhD. Are you studying PhD? Yes, I'm studying PhD here. Damn. Um, <laughs> how far into it are you? Quite far, like, like quite close to the end, like maybe two months, three months. So. It's crazy because I need to focus, but I can't. Like oh. two weeks ago, I can't focus on work, and I'm surprised that my, the university hasn't said anything while they so provide support for Ukrainian people. And I expected more because I know my university is very supportive, but I'm surprised that they haven't said anything about Iranian students. They can they can't see that we are worried about family. They can't see like. We can't talk to our family. I'm worried. I, I, I need to call them every day. And I'm worried if my phone uh, call will be eavesdropped, you know? So I can't trust wow. to ask anything about them. Wow. Shit, yeah, I, di I didn't even think about that. Okay, it's just it's a lot of things I had to think about at the same time. Wow. Well, I mean, I wish, I, I wish the absolute best for you and your family and... I hope you stay safe. Thank you very much. You too. Yeah. The the end is near for your PhD at least. Two or three months, you're almost <laughs> there. You're almost there. Yeah, I can see the end. Yeah. For both PhD and this regime. Yes. 
let's, let's hope it all um, gets a hell of a lot better very, very soon, I think. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me, Ali. Thanks, bye-bye. <laughs> Cheers. See you later. Bye. Yeah. Wow, what a legend. Um, she's so brave to share her story. Yes, Flora, I totally agree. Um, I like how strong and well-spoken the speaker is. I hope Iran will be a safer place for the women. Absolutely agree, yes. Um, Oksana says, a doctor of philosophy. Yes, a PhD is a doctor of philosophy, for sure. Um, I don't have the patience for that, but for everyone who does it, you're cool. Um, thank you everyone for watching. Um, if people don't know about the story in Iran, tell them, let them know using the vocabulary you've learned today. Mandatory, compulsory, forbidden, prohibited. Now you have the vocabulary to talk about it. Um, yeah. Um, in Poland we broke communism, you can... Yes, yes. Uh, also, if you're watching from Russia, you also have a big fight on your hands, and I hope you overthrew that, overthrow that dictator. Coffee for Ali from Pat I hope M. You go soon. I hope Komeni goes soon. Coffee. Pat M, thank you for the coffee, buddy. Always a pleasure. Pat M, you always stay silent during the live streams, but you you pop up at the end to buy me a coffee and. I really appreciate you. You're a legend. Thank you so much. Um, Chala, I feel your pain, my friend. Hope you'll get over it. Yes. To Iran, we send our love. And Ukraine, we send our love. And everyone protesting against Putin right now, I send you love. Um, let's hope the world sorts itself out soon. Jesus. A few more months left of the year. Let's Let's finish on a high note, you know? Ah, uh, wow. Okay, thank you everyone for watching. I'll be back next Sunday, same time, 1 p.m. London time. Back with a new English and chill topic, a new let's get political topic. Let's hope that the news is better next week. Thank you so much for watching.